relationship between historic percussion, information on historic percussion today, and um, some techniques on tambourines, early castanets, like the grandfather of the modern flamenco castanet, some rhythm games just for a basic polyphonic uh, polyrhythm feeling, and um, yeah, different techniques that we've been bending together from India, from the Arab world, from Italy, uh, all kinds of things that you can do with a tambourine. Well, I got interested in early percussion because I was invited to play medieval music, Renaissance music, Baroque music, and I thought, I would like to know what the hell they've been doing back then. I knew all the pictures, but then by collecting those pictures and uh, looking at them carefully and comparing them with what still is around today, you can extract the information and find out what they've been doing back then. So I got interested because nobody else knew what to do. So I thought, ah, oh, this, is, this is unique and uh, started getting into it and became a specialist. Of course, modern percussion players and drummers do have a basic understanding and feeling for rhythm. So that's something that I can base my teaching on. I don't have to explain them what a, what a triplet is or what the feeling is between a seven and a five, for instance, for illegal rhythms. But uh, the techniques that, I've te that I'm teaching are very, very different from whatever they play normally, because the biggest difference is that 99% they use sticks or mallets for marimba phone, for vibraphone, for xylophone, for timpani, for all kinds of drums. So they have two sticks, while well, now they have ten sticks in a way, so they have those ten fingers and there's all these small snaps and tucks and dunes and pars and scratches that they need to do. And um, some of those techniques still exist today because if you look at um, traditional music and musicians in Italy, in the Arab world, in India, they still use those techniques, but the source of course is much older. So looking at old paintings and pictures and sometimes photos, you see different hand positions and if you compare them with modern drummers today playing traditional percussion instruments, you see the same position traveling through the centuries from a 12th century painting where you see an angel holding a, holding a tambourine with this kind of position and you see a photo of a musician today doing the same thing in Italy then you know it's this kind of technique that's just very very old. teaching. Well, it, it would be perfect if my teacher, my, my students become better than me at some point, because this is how things evolve. You, know, so that you, you always hope that the next generation is even better. I hope that, I, that I'm better than my teachers now, and I hope that my students will be better than me one day, uh, because this is how we develop. There's a balance between teaching and passing on what I've been learning, what I found out, and being on the stage and performing and being a performer and play. You, you always learn something from the students, always. It, it's, a, it's not a one-way street, not at all, not at all. Because sometimes a student asks you questions like, but how do we get from position A to position B? And I'm like, Oh, um, how do I? Oh, good question. How do I actually do that? And then you slow down, you look at your hands, and you think, ah, there's a little extra movement that I make. And you tell the others, and they go like, ah, now it's getting really, really easy, or much easier anyway. Or when it comes to percussion, there's always somebody who is actually coming from Chile, or from India, or from Cambodia. And then they say, oh, we have a similar rhythm, and it goes like that and you get an information that you wouldn't have, never have achieved um, otherwise. So it's always, it's never a one-way street. That's the great thing about teaching.